All right, so let's take all of this into consideration and do some sense making. There's a lot going on here and we need to make sense out of it. So grab someone that's near you, text a friend that's also watching this video with you, and let's make sense of everything that we just saw because that was a lot going on. So what we can understand from what we just saw is that genes m provide instructions for making proteins. And these proteins have particular shapes. So the genes also dictate what shape that protein is. Those proteins are then, the way they fit together with the larger molecules, allow for traits to be expressed, okay? This is what we call a central dogma or central concept of genetics in biology. Genes provide instructions for proteins, which are then expressed as traits. And remember that shape of the protein is particularly important because it's got to be able to fit with that larger molecule in order for, in our case, a pigment to be produced for the stripe color of the spider. And we can see that here with the different gene version that Ruby had. Um, those gene versions, that difference provided different instructions, which was a different shape protein, which fitted differently with the molecule that created the black protein, okay? So a lot going on here. Remember, genes provide instructions for proteins, which are then expressed as traits. Okay, so let's boil this down to a couple of key concepts that are fundamental to our understanding and will help us explain um, the phenomena of the newts that we have been investigating as well. Grab your pencil. You're going to need to write this down. You can write it down in a tracker if you're using one of those. I'm just using a little notebook. You can put it down in your notebook. It's going to be essential that you write this down to help further our understanding. Okay, so the first key concept, genes are instructions for making protein molecules and protein molecules determine an organism's traits. Second key concept, individuals inherit their genes from their parents. Genes and therefore traits in a population are passed down from generation to generation. We're going to see that a little bit more with our next activity, but make sure you have these written down either in your tracker or your notebook so we can expand upon them a little bit later. So now we have a better understanding of where individuals in population get their traits. We know that they get their traits from their genes, and those genes come from the parents of a organism who have passed down their genes through the process of reproduction. Now those genes then provide instructions for making proteins in a particular shape, and those proteins can then attach to larger molecules, which then allow for a particular trait, such as stripe color in the spiders we saw before, to be expressed, okay? So now the question becomes, well then how do some traits become more common in a population? And we know that the new population became more poisonous because of the presence of snakes in the environment, which caused the trait for poison level to become an adaptive trait. But how did it become more common in the population is our next question. Now, our park visitors have some suggestions for us on how exactly this happened. The first suggestion that they have is that poison level 10 is the most common in the population because the newts with this trait were able to live longer than other newts. Their next suggestion is that poison level 10 is the most common because the newts with the trait produce more than other newts. So let's check this out in our simulation and find out um, some evidence and data that may support or refute either of these claims. So as we go into our simulation, we're going to be investigating this question. How do some traits become more common over many generations while others become less common? Now, 
Grab your pencil or pen and we need to create a data table in your notebook for you to record this data. Here is what your data table should look like. So with your pen or pencil and your notebook, you can grab a ruler if you want to be particular about it. You are going to create this table in which we will be recording data for each of these different um, Australopes with different color levels of one, four, seven, and 10. And we'll have five different trials here. And what we're gonna do is we are going to follow Australopes with this particular color, and we're gonna count how many times they reproduce while we're watching the simulation. And that will give us some evidence as to uh, which uh, Australope colors may reproduce more or less than others. So go ahead, take a minute with your pen or pencil and copy down this data table so that we will um, have a space to record our data.